Hello and welcome to the News X at the Guardian Roundtable. Well, the Bihar Chief Minister has conducted a caste census and that is creating a lot of ripples, especially within the opposition. The BJP has reacted saying that, you know, the, for them, the job reservation should be really on the basis of uh, empl- of poverty lines and not really caste lines. This is just dividing the society. But the opposition finally feels that it has a narrative. It wants to play the Mandal versus Kamandal card. They feel they have something to go uh, to the next elections with. But how long will this hold? Is this really necessary? Or is this just Nitish Kumar? Kumar trying to propel himself as larger than life and as a primary student face for 2024. That is something we are going to be discussing, how relevant is the caste census in today's India and the need for it. Joining me on the show is Guru Prakash. He's the national spokesperson of the BJP and also a writer, the author of The Makers of Modern Dalit History. We have Sanjay, Professor Sanjay Kumar. He is, of course, a professor at CSDS and also the director at Lokniti and a sophologist. And uh, Tehseen Punawala, Congress supporters, uh, lawyer and a very articulate defender of the Congress party on the panel. But Guru Prakash, first, you know, you are from Bihar also. So what is the impact on the ground uh, of the caste census? Why have they done this and why is BJP opposing it? Priyaji, Namaskar to you and uh, all my fellow panelists. Uh, we need to understand a couple of things first. So this has been uh, going on for quite some time now. Mm. But uh, as uh, I would like to quote Jeremy Bentham, Jeremy Bentham is a noted uh, jurist and uh, he has inspired the study of legal philosophy jurisprudence in multiple ways. And he makes a very compelling comment which is relevant in the present case and scenario. He says, uh, before a law is made, the intention with which it's being made must be analyzed and questioned. So Mm -hmm. in the present scenario, caste census or uh, the caste-based survey which is uh, being projected by the state government of Bihar it's highly questionable on uh, multiple levels. Obviously, there are questions being raised on the authenticity or the genuineness of the entire project. And second, the intention is something which is very dubious, which is very questionable. If you, hypothetically, if you see, if you do a caste census of these political parties, you would uh, find a very interesting observation that JDU, Janta Dal United, look at the history of Janta Dal United and you ask anyone from Bihar, he or she can tell you that Janta Dal United is a political party of one man and one caste specifically. For Kurmis, Janta mm-hmm. Dal United is the natural home. You come to RJD, the Rashtri Janta Dal. The Rashtri Janta Dal specifically belongs to one caste and one family. If you do a caste census within the Rashtri Janta Dal, Priyaji, you would see Deputy CM Kaun Hoga, Tejasvi Yadav. Who would be a minister? Tejpita Yadav. Who would be sent to Rajya Sabha? Misa Bharti. Who would be sent to the Legislative Council? Rabri Devi. These family-based, individual-based, caste-based outfits haven't actually looked beyond their comfort zones. So this is the last Trukkaika, which is being uh, used by uh, a section of the opposition and obviously the India Alliance as well. But we don't think that there is any semblance on the ground because on the ground, many historical and remarkable tectonic shifts have happened in the social justice discourse. We are all very well aware of the fact that for the first time in history, we have a woman from the tribal community reaching the highest constitutional office in the country. Did we require a caste census for that? Absolutely no. For the first time, PRG, we are witnessing a transformation of the country under one of the most powerful prime ministers in the recent history. Narendra Modi himself comes from an extremely backward class community. So an EBC as a prime minister, a tribal lady as the president of India, I think this is something which is not just symbolic, but sends a message across the deprived and the marginalized sections. I can give you hundreds such examples. For the first time since 1952, in the presidential nominations to Rajya Sabha, we have a Dalit Padmashri Ilaya Rajaji sent to Rajya Sabha. 37 okay. <laughs> council of ministries and OBC. So the actual genuineness, the parameters or the paradigm of the social justice is your commitment, is uh, your will to give and the share uh, in the power structure and the institutions that matter. Okay. Sajiti, what is your take on this? You know, why have they done the caste census and uh, do you feel there is a need for it and will it be a poll issue? Why they have done the caste census? I think there have always been speculation what are the what is the number of OBC uh, in Bihar and in other states. And there is a demand or there is a, a popular, mo- popular uh, mobilization around the fact that 
you know, people should be given political representation or people should be given a uh, share in socioeconomic development, socioeconomic uh, developmental aspect in proportion to the share in population. So what has been going on is that, you know, one doesn't know what is the proportion of different castes, especially the OBC. We know about the Dalit, we know about the Adivasis based on the census. So I think this was the demand that there should be an data, a new data should come out because we have been referring to the 1931 census. So this was the demand uh, that a caste census should be done. We should know what is the proportion of OBC and the charges which are being leveled by the regional parties and including the Congress now is that OBCs, the population of OBC is much larger compared to the proportion of reservation given to the OBC in central government job. I think that is the reason why they wanted to conduct a caste census, which is now uh, in front of all of us in from Bihar. They seem, uh, you know, uh, we've got their explanation and he's as a uh, good Prakash saying that, you know, you don't need a caste census. If you want to promote someone, you can, you know, you can, uh, you don't need uh, the data. You don't need this whole politics of it all. Would you agree? Anushkar uh, Priya, thank you for having me on the show and uh, Anushkar to both my fellow panelists and to all your viewers. The BJP, like my good friend Guru Prakashji, loves to run with the hare and hunt with the hound and it doesn't work like that. And Priyaji, it is one thing I see which has become very viral. One is either pregnant or not pregnant. One can't be half pregnant. So hmm. either the BJP is with the caste census or it's against it. Guru Prakashji can't say that, uh, oh, you don't require. So is Guru Prakashji and his BJP's official position that it's against the caste census? If so, I request you, Priyaji, put that as a breaking news. If no, everything else is what about me. Now, uh, ask Guru Prakashji to, in one line, say, is he for it or against it? Then I'll make my argument. Because you can't say I'm for it, but this is not required. Or you're for it or you're against it. What is Guru Prakashji's argument? Is he for it or against it? And that's a breaking news now. Well, the line, the party has taken a line. Guru Prakash, you want to come in? Nahi. What's your line? For it? I, I think, I think uh, my good friend has seen, uh, I've always uh, told him that he is the right man in the wrong party. But Tessinji, mm -hmm. in life and in politics, there is no black and white. We need to look beyond the binary. Social justice is not just a matter of politics for us. For the first time, Tessinji, we are seeing 37%... Guru Prakash, one, 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 one line question, one line question. Are you for the census or against it? Just tell me that. Binary, I'm coming. You have asked me, you have to listen to me. I'm saying that it's for binary or not. My chance is just one line. Are you for it or not? It's not binary. I'm telling you, you can ask me. He's saying he's for empowerment but not a census. Is that correct? See? That's your personal view. That's your personal view. <laughs> see, okay, see Priyaji, what I did on your show is my dear friend Guru Prakashji, who mm. is the right man, I believe in the wrong party and should be with <laughs> India, has not taken a position. Now, mm. here's what I'm saying. How do you empower a, the majority of the citizens without knowing how many they are? As Sanjay Kumarji rightly said, we're looking at a 1931 census. But I have a larger issue. Even when we look at constitutional resolutions, say the SCST, let's look in central universities, not because I'm taking a pot shot at BGP, because they would be better governed than most, as the assumption is. The positions of SC and ST vice chancellors are not are not filled. Let's look at any state. Let's look at Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh. How many DMs today are from the Dalit or OBC or SC or ST community? How many uh, police commissioners, SPs? They aren't. They don't get their share in the pie. So, jiski jitni sankhya bhari uski utne hissedari. And to know that hissedari, you should know the sankhya. Why is it wrong? Nobody is asking for anyone else's share of pie. What you're saying is, what is not given should be given. Now, Guru Prakash Ji rightly spoke about the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable President. But this is what about we? When you oppose the president, election. It's not because you're opposing her because she's a tribal or a woman. BJP opposed her, the first woman president. They opposed Kiyar Narayan and you the first Dalit president. Are they anti-Dalit? That's, these are political decisions. What matters is, what matters is when, what does the president or the prime minister do for the community? And in this particular case, unfortunately, the prime minister hasn't done much. He may have appointed ministers. And I agree to that that he's appointed the most number of OBC ministers. What is the power that they have? What is the, what is, has he filled up the constitutional posts? He hasn't. And one last position, just for the, uh, for record for your viewers, the honorable prime minister's community was not originally in the OBC community. When the original, when the prime minister became chief minister of Gujarat, 
He put his community in the OBC category. Nothing wrong with that. I respect the prime minister and I respect that he's an OBC prime minister, but it wasn't that the case. So I think that this argument needs to be slightly more nuanced as my friend Guru Prakash Ji says. So. Guru Prakash, so, uh, okay. No, so I, was, I was patiently listening to my friend and like I said, it's beyond binaries. It's a matter of commitment. It's not just a matter of politics. Hmm. And uh, like he said about uh, for the first time when an Adivasi woman has reached the highest constitutional office, Mr. Adhiranjan Chaudhary, referring to the first tribal woman as Rashtrapatni, was it also a political opposition? Number one. Number two, Mr. Udit Raj, Professor Ajoy Kumar, the official national spokesperson of the Congress party, saying, Wo shaitani manasikta ka pratinidhitu karti hai. Was it an official uh, standpoint of the Congress party? Number two. Sitaram Kesri, I come from Bihar. Sitaram Kesri, an OBC leader, he was inserted in the Congress office. Unki dhoti kichi gai thi. This is officially on record. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, he dies in 1956. Congress party, Congress government took more than four decades. It finally happened in a non Congress government at the center that accorded Bharat Ratan to the former, uh, to the uh, okay, that is no, just a moment, just a moment. So, so I think I think the hypocrisy must be called out. Congress for long has been anti-Talit, anti-woman, and this entire shigufa, this entire sloganeering is definitely going to be the last nail on the coffin of the Congress party. Let me put this very clear. Congress historically, Priyaji, for your viewers, I'm sure they're educated enough. Who opposed the first backward classes commission, Kaka Kalilka Commission, the Congress Party. Congress party, Rajiv Gandhi on the floor of the house, on the floor of the parliament, opposed the recommendation of Mandal Commission. The Mandal Commission was on the floor of the Mandal Commission. I think that the hypocrisy and dual standards of the hypocrisy and dual standards of the Congress party is clearly in this. And okay. second, and secondly, hmm. just, just a moment. Now, just I want to take this point with uh, Sanjay Ji, and uh, I'll come back to your point, but this is a good point. Uh, Sanjay Ji, first, can the Congress, which opposed the Mandal Commission, now suddenly is talking about OBC rights and, you know, Rahul Gandhi is reinventing himself as the Messiah. Is that, is that going to work? Have the OBCs voted for the Congress? No, first, um, see, people's stand change, people's orientation change, your perception change. So I see nothing wrong if a party has opposed something in the past. And now party is trying to, you know, change its stand. No, nothing wrong in that. This applies to, polit uh, to various political parties, not only about Congress. Maybe Congress has opposed the Mandal Commission earlier, but now they are supporting. Uh, so what's, are they making a mistake? I don't think they're making a mistake. They're making a correction. They're, the thinking may have changed. The leaders may have changed. So nothing wrong in that. But now the, your other question, will it work? Huh. That's a big question mark. That will it work? Work to what extent? Look at the situation of Congress. Congress is lying so low with a 19% vote. I don't think it is work. It is going to work for the Congress in such a way that it can emerge as a very uh, as a very strong party in 2024. Also, Priya, the larger benefit, whatever benefit, and I would again put a big question mark on that. I don't think this is going to be a very effective tool of mobilization which can give huge you know, support for the regional party and the Congress. But whatever gains may come, larger proportion of that will be reaped by the regional party, not by the Congress. That is the, you know, the last point that you made is correct. You know, Tessim, because the regional parties are really the benefactors. The OBC vote has not been with the Congress for a very long time. I have a lot of respect for Sanjay ji, but may I just slightly disagree with him? And I know the Congress and I know Rahul ji. He's not doing this for any political benefit. Rahul ji is beyond political benefits. Rahul ji is doing it because he genuinely believes social justice must be delivered. And you will remember, Priya, that mm -hmm. this was committed on the floor of the House in 2011 and the then honorable leader of uh, the, the president of the BJP, Sri Rajnath Singh ji, our defense minister, got up and committed that come what may, there were calculation errors in the 2011 census. By 2018, this car census will be released. What happened since then? 2014, Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji becomes Prime Minister. Why are the 102nd constitutional amendment? They took away the power of states to do the car census, which was then restored by the 121st amendment. So they took away the states' their uh, power by delaying this. Now, uh, Guru Prakash ji gave all sorts of past history, which I think some of it is justified. Congress is wrong. They've made their wrongs correct. But 
at least the Congress at that time articulated its position that we are against it. Today it's articulating its position. The Congress has been the only political party articulating. The BJP, as I exposed on your show, Guru Prakashji cannot articulate his position. And I'll explain to you why. In the RSS, the organization from where the Honorable Prime Minister comes, most BJP leaders come. I don't know if Guru Prakashji, my friend, comes, but I hope he does visit the organization. There has never been an OBC or a Dalit chief or a tribal chief. And Guru Prakashji, if he joins the RSS, can never become chief, unfortunately, because it's an upper caste organization. And therein is the ills that we have to correct. We have to correct the sins. Nobody is taking away the rights of everybody else. We are just saying everyone should get their rights. I don't see why there should be a conflict or that should lead to lesser development. This isn't about politics of 2024. This is about empowering our fellow citizens who have been denied rights. For example, RSS chief has never been from the Paswan community and can never be. And I hope somebody, someday Guru Prakaji can become the RSS chief because he's certainly a lot more capable than most of the past RSS chiefs. On that note, I'm going to take a quick break. I know you want to come back. I'm going to come to Guru Prash, but just a very quick break. So stay with us. Hello and welcome back to the NewsX Sunday Guardian Roundtable. We are here discussing the politics started off by the caste census. And are we looking at an election that's going to be dominated by Mandal versus Kamandal? Guru Prash, you know, can you ever hope to become the RSS chief as they see mass? <laughs> No, no, I think I hope to become the prime minister of the country. And the situation is right. <laughs> the situation is appropriate today. Why only RSS chief? Which position is more powerful, the RSS chief or the prime minister? I think obviously, the constitutional position, the prime minister, but the point is different. The point you have to understand that RSS as an organization is the world's largest sociocultural organization. Vanavasi Kalyan Ashram, which is an outfit of the sun, works in more mm. than 60,000 villages. I don't need to mention here the report card or the performance of RSS in the COVID in California for that matter. In United States of America, in the California state, the non-profit of the year award went to the RSS organization. So RSS, yeah. uh, you don't need any certificate from anyone. Number one. Number two, uh, my friend Tessin's party, Congress party is in power in four states. And Mr. Rahul Gandhi keeps saying that uh, additional secretary OBC kitne hai, joint secretary OBC kitne hai, of all the four states where Congress is in power, not a single OBC, SC, ST are secretaries there. This is hypocrisy number one. Hypocrisy number two. In 2014, how many joint secretaries were there uh, from the OBC community? Four. Today, 66 joint secretaries are there. So I don't think we need any certificate from anyone when it comes to social justice. My friend also spoke about the 102nd Amendment, but uh, conveniently forgot about... Uh, the Supreme Court judgment that came followed by it and the review petition that was filed by the central government saying that it must be restored. States must be given the autonomy and the power to identify the SEBCs, to identify the OBCs. So it was the central government that gave autonomy to the state government to identify the OBC communities. So I really don't think that uh, our performances can be judged by the yardstick being set by the Congress party. Our okay. commitment is there. The, la the, the, the last point, uh, Priyaji, mm. I'm sure you are aware of the fact that uh, the quotas in the medical college are you aware of the fact that till 1986, till 1986, there was no quota for SC, ST or OBC uh, for the medical college admissions? Thanks to the Supreme Court of India, it came in 1986. And thanks to the Modi government, now even NET aims uh, examination okay. has an equitable distribution. So that is something which is very crucial and significant and no one is talking about it. And the Congress party talking about leadership position in the entire history of the Congress party. How many Dalit presidents were there? For the but first time, they have one. That, no, no, currently they haven't, definitely. But for the first and the way they treated Babu Jagjivan Ram, the way they treated Baba Sahib Ambedkar, it's a public okay. knowledge. But for the okay. first time, Bangaru Lakshman became a powerful national president of a national political party. For the first time, we saw GMC Balyogi becoming the Lok Sabha Adesh in the NDA okay. government. There are hundreds such examples of empowerment that matters. But unfortunately, Congress party has only treated the backwards and the marginalized as vote banks. For the first time in the last nine and a half years, they are being treated not just as vote banks, but thought banks and real leadership has gone to them. Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, you can speak about it. All the vote banks, not thought banks. Good line. No, Good, uh, all, 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 all the Padma Shri's, and Priyash, you are very well aware, all the Padma Shri's and the civilian owners were reserved for the people who had proximity to the cell. But today, someone in Sambalpur, Odisha, who speaks in who speaks and writes poem in Kosali language, like a Padma Shri Haldar Nath, he's being acknowledged. 
someone like Shantaram Sidhi, whose population okay. is eight thousand, is being sentenced to death. Fair same answer. Then I want to speak to Sanjay Ji about a big larger takeaway from this. But first, I know you want to rebut uh, Guru Prakash. No, so let's let's get. Uh, I love how the BJP tries to turn the arguments around. If memory serves me right, in 1986, Sri Rajiv Gandhi Ji was Prime Minister of India, right? When the reservations were given in the medical category, or was it BJP? And Rajiv Gandhi Ji's government passed it. It was challenged in court. The central government in that historic Supreme Court decision stood by the reservations. So, say Supreme Court gave it. Here, if a small flyover is inaugurated, the part-time Pradhan Mantri, full-time Prachar Mantri, and nowadays YouTuber takes our honourable Prime Minister gets credit for it. But there, Rajiv Gandhi's historical decision, winning in Supreme Court, does not get credit. Wow, Modi ji, wow, as Modi ji says. Now let's come to the larger issue at hand. The fact is, both Guru Prakash Ji and I agree that the OBCs must be empowered. So if they must be empowered, what is the only scientific method? A survey that must be conducted. The last census was 1931. Now, states are conducting it. Congress states are conducting it. You took away the power under the 102nd Constitutional Amendment. When there was challenge in Supreme Court, you restored that power by taking a position. You can't run with the hare and hunt with the hound. And as for why 2014, they didn't have joint secretaries, OBC as secretaries only came into effect in 1992. So they were not promoted enough. When they did, which is now, how many are there? You haven't given those powers. Congress, out of four states, that is ruling as three OBC chief ministers, actually chief ministers born in OBC communities. So let's understand the distinction. I agree the BJP will say they are doing more. The, I will say the Congress is doing more. Leave that argument aside. What is the best way? Let's look at the data and give them their share. Why doesn't the BZ, BJP take a position on that? My position is it should be given the share. Guru Prakash Ji says everything around the bush from Padma Shri to Prime Minister clicking someone's photograph doesn't say whether their share should be given. That's the difference okay. in the argument. Okay. Okay, Sanjay, I just say, you know, you know, he reacted. Just I just want to end it on a good note. Is you know, if not this narrative, no minute, no minute. Let me get Sanjay in. If not this, then what? You know, uh, if uh, the, we always say the opposition needs a narrative, they've come up with something, at least something to position. You know, they can work around it. Uh, you, you know, if not this, then what else is my question? <laughs> if not this, then what is the other narrative? No, I, I really believe that something has come into the hand of opposition. And this is an in, important issue. I'm not saying that this is a trivial issue. Uh, uh -huh. Because if you want to, if you want to, uh, like, if you want to come out with any policy for the welfare of any community, any group, you need the numbers. You need, first you need the number, you need to know their socioeconomic status. And how do you know that? Unless until you do a survey or you do a census. So this is the step in the direction. The whole issue is whether the, how far this step is going to go forward. The other thing which can come handy in the hands of opposition parties when it comes to election and mobilizing voters are the twin issues of unemployment and price rise. These are the important issues. Uh, but what is happening is that whenever the opposition parties come up, try to come up with this issue, uh, they get the attention get deflected because several other issues come up and they have to respond to this, those issues. So the attention gets diverted. So this is one issue. And as I said, price rise and unemployment, these are other issues which can be used by the opposition to mobilize the voters. So then is the BJP being smart when it says not caste, nay, but poverty should be the criteria. Economic uh, EWS is the criteria for uh, reservations. Sanjay Ji. Uh, see, at the moment, very difficult, Priya, to say whether it is smart move or not, but they have come up with a narrative to counter uh, the narrative which is being built by the opposition parties. Uh, like deprivation of people belong to certain caste. So in order to cover up or in order to build a counter narrative, Prime Minister has started talking about deprivation of the, of the poor. Uh, They're talking about if it is all about numbers, that numbers matter, then who are ve in very large number? So poor people are in very large number. So it, it is a, there is an effort, there is a sincere effort, seems like a good tool. I think we will have to wait to see which is going to work more on the ground. People are going to connect whether with the uh, caste or with the class thing. I just have one line to add to Sanjayji and Guru Prakashji in this, in this, in this poor definition of EWS reservation. I challenged that in Supreme Court. The definition of poor is eight lakhs and below. In this country, the Honorable Prime Minister's government is getting eight lakhs as poor. Our per capita income is some seven. So you see the you see you see what they're doing. It is okay. only to deprive the absolute those who require. Eight lakhs is considered poor. 
eight okay. lakhs tulia. Uh, Guru Prakash, I'll, I'll give you the last word. No, no, I, I think I've been uh, hearing this out very patiently, and I would like to thank you, Priya ji, for uh, the kind of words or the expletives that has been used by the Honorable Prime Minister for the last twenty years, I think, and that is precisely the mindset of the Congress Party, the feudal mindset of the Congress Party, who cannot accept, leave alone, tolerate. an obc person as the powerful prime minister of the country my friend said 47 se 86 mein are bhai 47 se 86 the congress party the power mein congress party ne medical and admission nahi diya reservation nahi diya so this dual standards this hypocrisy must be called out abhi okay. no no i think i think last word priya ji we don't like i said hmm. people people from scs people from schedule type people from obc they can see through this hypocrisy and that is precisely the reason in 2014 in 2019 now sanjay ji can vouch for it that 44% of the obc voted for the bjp so i, I okay. think it's so we we'll see where the voters are we are a pair want to cut any of you out but it's really you know at the end of the day uh, uh, you know i would not say a card has been played but the issue has been raised let's see where we go with this but thank you for this conversation thank you all. For more such videos subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel hit the bell icon